Device. Camera. Action. Have you ever watched an actor and felt as though they weren't simply just performing meaningless memorizations to you, but actually embodying the soul of their character? What if I told you that acting goes far beyond pretending, but it's a deeper mystical venture? Today, we're delving into the spirituality of acting, a captivating intersection of art, the psyche, and the human soul. We are investigating the transformation and transcendence of the actor, screen and stage, through the lens of the philosophy of consciousness. To make sense of this concept, we'll explore it through a deep dive of the alchemical practices of Sanford Meisner's method acting, Carl Jung's theories on the unconscious, and the concept of flow by Mihai, cheek sent Mihai. What a mouthful, huh? <laughs> so this search for answers began when I asked myself years ago why in the world I'm obsessed with the activity of acting in the first place. Could it be a search for human connection? Is it because I love to escape reality and frolic into wild, kooky fantasy realms? Are there restrictions and rituals to the practice of acting? And also, am I the only one who feels this way? Or do other performers feel this otherworldly spark as well? Through my experiences as a performer, I have been able to recognize a certain level of being beyond our typical human conception of what it means to simply physically exist in a space. I've been a direct witness to the crucial changes going on in the mind and experienced and reflected on my own embodiment as an actor. However, more often than not, I see the people around me living life in the opposite manner, existing mostly in states of necessity to thrive and survive. And I took a keenness to exploring why it is most people live this way at times. I can attest though that from time to time, there are people who attempt to question their way of living, perception, existence, and manifest their creative expressions through this altered perception. This process goes beyond conventional day-to-day -day living. This is the lifeline of the artist, the creator. What do we even mean when we speak of spirituality anyways? As defined by the Royal College of Psychiatrists, spirituality involves the recognition of a feeling or sense or belief that there is something greater than oneself, something more to being human than sensory experience, and that the greater whole of which we are part is cosmic or divine in nature. Spirituality means knowing that our lives have significance in a context beyond a mundane, everyday existence at the level of biological needs that drive selfishness and aggression. It means knowing that we are a significant part of a purposeful unfolding of life in our universe. Psychology Today further describes it by mentioning spirituality may mean different things to different people. For some, it's primarily about a belief in a deity, an active participation in organized religion. For others, it's about non-religious experiences that help them get in touch with their spiritual selves through quiet reflection, time in nature, private prayer, ritual yoga, or meditation. Compared to typical religious movements, spirituality is a more free-flowing individualistic approach to the practice of consciousness expansion and soul connection. I would like to mention, however, that quantifying, measuring, or investigating the dimensions of the spirit is very difficult. But for simplicity's sake, the spirit, or soul, is the divine essence of a being, a living being, a grand universal expression of consciousness spiritual practitioners believe all living beings to possess. In tandem with the egoic and psychological mind, along with this, it is also interesting to note that with this internal duality exists a collective experience of the spirit, a deeper connectedness between all human beings. Now, what is acting then? There's too many definitions from many practitioners, students, as well as professionals. See how I implied to you earlier? It is a practice that can be uniquely catered for one's personal creative preference. Therefore, it is spiritual in nature. According to Russian theater practitioner Konstantin Stanislavsky's method, 
precursor to Meisner. The actor takes part in an authentic experience of acting through engaging with these core principles. Action. Acting with a purpose. The magic if. To stimulate new possibilities. For example, what would happen if the given circumstance, the story of the play, facts, events, time, place of action, conditions of life, the actor's interpretation, production, sets, costumes, properties, lighting, and sound effects. Imagination. The when, where, why, how. Circles of attention. A need to find ways of relaxing and focus. The super objective. The overarching objectives and the through line of the piece and character. And finally, emotional memory. To create a reservoir of emotional memory from which to draw and on which to build. From Stanislavski's famous book, An Actor Prepares, in chapter two, quoting actor Tommaso Salvini, the great actor should be full of feeling, and especially he should feel the thing he is portraying. He must feel an emotion not only once or twice, but to a greater or lesser degree every time he plays it, no matter whether it is the first or thousandth time. Then in Stanislavski's own words, unfortunately, this is not within our control. Our subconscious is inaccessible to our consciousness. We cannot enter into that realm. If for any reason we do penetrate into it, then the subconscious becomes conscious and dies, he continues. The result is a predicament. We are supposed to create under inspiration. Only our subconscious gives us inspiration, yet we apparently can use the subconscious only through our consciousness, which kills it. Fortunately, there is a way out. We find the solution in an oblique, instead of a direct approach. In the soul of a human being, there are certain elements which are subject to consciousness and will. These accessible parts are capable in turn of acting on psychic processes that are involuntary. So, how best can an actor better consciously prepare the way for the blossoming of this flow of the subconscious, or in other words, inspiration? Now you have something cool to think about. Method Acting by Sanford Meisner Sanford Meisner, a pioneer in American theater, believed acting was all about living truthfully under imaginary circumstances. Meisner expanded on Stanislavski's techniques like emotional memory, pushing actors to relive their own experiences and the roles they portrayed. The practice of acting, whether contextualized on the stage or in film, can be seen through several lenses. Defined using one theory of the theater practitioner Konstantin Stanislavski, it is said in his work Creating a Role, the preparatory work on a role can be divided into three great periods, studying it, establishing the life of the role, and putting it into physical form. The actor's job now is to prepare and ground themselves in the role and to establish a realistic embodiment of the character they are tasked with. Successful embodiment would include connecting emotively to the psychological states and feelings of the role, the physical states, the background, the objectives, etc. An in-depth analysis is what Stanislavski's technique usually requires, but with emphasis on never completely finding a connected aspect of yourself to the different states of the character being explored. In Alison Hodge's academic text, Actor Training, she says, whether emphasizing psychology, Strasberg, sociology, Adler, or spontaneous behavior, Meisner, Method actors search for the reality that must underlie a quality performance. The method is neither singular in its outlook nor mutually exclusive. One facet of the method does not cancel out another. Effective memory, the plays given circumstances, and repetition may function together. Voice, speech, and movement are integrated. And textual analysis is integral to working on a role. Method acting, when properly used, is holistic, enabling the actor to perform on several levels with conviction and confidence. It transcends the artifice of staged contrivances, 
offering actors opportunities to explore roles by calling on them to investigate their personal experience, imagination, and behavior. Meisner highlights on spontaneity only after having learned the lines of the role given. I think the free-flowing and improvisational nature of the stellar technique and the ritualized manner of repetitiveness of the exercises prove for less self-centeredness and self-consciousness. Once the actor has found harmony within them, the other performers and the space, the state of flow reveals itself. This isn't just acting, it's a quest for emotional and spiritual authenticity. Actors tap into their deepest emotions, making the stage a sacred space for expression. Carl Jung's theories on the unconscious. Carl Jung, a Swiss psychiatrist, gave us groundbreaking theories on the unconscious mind. He talked about archetypes, the shadow, and the collective unconscious, elements that form our deepest self. Carl Jung gives an understanding of transcendence and the self using his theory of individuation. Quote, An accurate understanding of Jung's view of self must include the idea of individuation, by which he meant becoming a single homogenous being and insofar as individuality embraces our innermost last and incomparable uniqueness. It also implies becoming one's own self. Individuation is not about individualism, but about actualizing the unique self that exists inside me. It is about reviewing and rejecting the possible versions of myself that are not in true keeping with my essence." Unquote. It is clear here that transcendence can very simply be explained as the state of consciousness and being where one holds themselves accountable. This is the space where one shifts from being unaware to being fully aware and attentive. This is a state in which I feel one innocence rises and becomes lighter much like a solid turning into a gas. Transcendence, I would define as changing or evolving into something less stagnant and controlled. The transcendental state also places one in a position of self-accountability and responsibility. Quote, the space of transcendence doesn't think in this way. It doesn't exactly think. It's very intertwined with intuitive knowing that allows you to see a bigger picture. And from this greater awareness, you can choose your actions from the ego state. You would choose something that you think would get you to the best result or would get you away from uncomfortable feelings, unquote. When an actor connects with their character, they're essentially dialoguing with these archetypes, facing their shadow, and perhaps even tapping into the collective unconscious, it's psychoanalysis live on stage. The State of Flow by Mihai Csikszentmihalyi. Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, a Hungarian-American psychologist, introduced us to the concept of flow. Flow is a state of complete immersion where you lose yourself in the activity. According to him, flow is a mental state or a state of consciousness which one gets completely absorbed by that which he or she is doing. Mihai observed during his time as a prisoner during World War II that the people around him were experiencing immense pain and suffering during this time. He then took it upon himself to research and explore happiness and contentment. Quote, Beyond each person's set point of happiness, there is a level of happiness over which each individual has some degree of control. Through research, Cheek sent me high began to understand that people were their most creative, productive, and happy when they are in a state of flow. End quote. One engaged with flow or within the flow state is in a balanced, harmonious state between challenge and skill. It is a state in which one finds that the ratio between the challenge of the task at hand and the level of skill required to follow through on the task is in perfect equilibrium. This balance then results in complete immersion. When actors reach the state of flow, their performance becomes a meditative, almost a spiritual act, transcending the ordinary bounds of reality. What has been illustrated to me is that it is possible to go through a metamorphosis and alchemical venture. Not only is this possible through everyday reality, it is evident within the performance space inside of the body and outside. 
Spiritual alchemy can be likened to physical alchemy. This is an alteration of the physical properties of solid matter. As an actor, I feel such mindful preparation and internal journeying assists with freeing oneself from the self-consciousness artists usually feel about their work. It is of significance, I think, that a system such as this be developed, not only for other kinds of performers and artists, but also specifically for the method actor. I found also that the potential risk factors of the method could also be considered an alchemy of sorts. There is a drastic change in the psychological matter of the performer, at times very traumatic. The technique is so mind-shattering and soul-crushing at times, and a groundedness is needed to evade from instances of psychological and physical harm during and after actor training and performance. I believe the harm comes with a rigid attachment to self, which then leads to suffering. This is the same in daily life. There is indeed a journey an actor goes through. It is an experience beyond one which involves delving into the mind of the given role. Whether it's the raw emotionality of method acting, the deep psychoanalytic venture of Carl Jung's theories, or the transcendental experience of flow, acting serves as a gateway to the spiritual. Acting is not merely performative, it is transformative, both for the actor and the audience. So the next time you watch a film or a play, try to see beyond the characters. Look for the spirit that enlivens the art form. Please do boop boop the like button, subscribe, leave comments of anything else you'd like me to cover it in the future. Hikate loves you, unicorns. I wish you a magical existence. Thank you. <laughs>